So, um, good evening, everyone. And uh, I think probably uh, everybody right now is thinking that what is this communication business and why are we even really discussing it at this conference? So, uh, at the beginning, congratulations to the entire team for the first meeting and for letting me choose my topic. Uh, this topic is actually now going to be included in the Endocrine Society of India textbook as a chapter. And that is why I was very keen to do it. So this is something which uh, Daniel Kamen, who re received the Nobel Prize for Economics, uh, said that people don't choose between things, but between description of things. Means that people don't choose um, between an X-ray and maybe a CT scan, but how the doctor communicates about the X-ray or the CT scan and what is the value of that investigation to the person is probably what helps people to make choices. The same way about treatment, if I want to convince somebody to take a GLP-1 analog, even if it's 10,000 rupees a month, the way I communicate has a great impact on what choice um, you know, the person will ultimately make. Now, why did we start this journey of communication and endocrinology? Because we had conducted a survey in about 1,000 endocrinologists and diabetologists across the country, and we listened to all the physicians' perspectives on patient communication and how that impacts diabetes adherence. And what most doctors said is they tend to show their disappointment in their patient's progress. They use scare tactics to convey the severity of the disease. And they all said that communication cues are really, really important. However, uh, we also did focus group discussions with a lot of patients, and these were some of the phrases that patients recalled had been said to them during consultations. With these sugars, your kidneys will fail and your life will be cut short by 10 years. When I went to the doctor the first time, the doctor scared me. Every time I went back, they told me, you will have a heart attack. Whatever patient has to face, he has to face, but the scare tactics only create fear psychosis. So somewhere, uh, as doctors, we know what's the right way to communicate. We know what's important. But somehow in clinical practice, maybe because there are too many patients, maybe that's what you've seen your seniors do. We tend to use a lot of scare tactics uh, in our communication with our patients of diabetes as well as endocrinology. I will never forget this lady. She died a few months after you know this interview was done. And she said, you know what? I'm an animal lover. And my doctor told me that my pancreas is like a dead horse. I mean, what is the relationship between a dead horse and a pancreas and she was very very upset and unfortunately I lost her a few uh, months after we conducted this interview. So uh, the question is is communication a desirable skill in endocrinology? How does good communication impact our practice and is it the need of the hour? Now I know that doctors and endocrinologists respond to data so let's talk a little bit about data in endocrinology and whether it's a, a desirable skill. Now there's a beautiful paper all they did is they conducted a survey of program directors in endocrinology and recent graduates of endocrinology. And they asked them that if we create a leadership training in endocrinology fellowship, what were the skills that you would rate as the most important for somebody to include in the curriculum for leadership training? So if we had to teach people to be leaders in endocrinology, what is the one skill or what are the different skills that you would really want in the curriculum? So what the program directors, 97.5% of the program directors of endocrinology in various hospitals in the U.S. felt that communication skills were the topmost skills that were required to be in the curriculum to create good leaders. And more than 80% of the recent graduates also concurred with this opinion. So to people who are designing endocrinology and diabetes courses, leader communication skills are really important. This next paper is called Clinical Excellence in Endocrinology, and Dr. Howard Baum is trying to uh, uh, define what are the elements that are needed to be excellent in endocrinology. And he rates communication and interpersonal skills above knowledge and scholarly approach. So all our life in medicine, we are told it's what we know that's most important. But I think it's now time to shift the perspective. Yes, of course, we need to know the subject matter very well. But probably how we communicate the subject matter is a little bit more important than how much knowledge you have. Um, why are we even talking about commun communication and endocrinology? Why? What is so unique about endocrinology? Well, first off, endocrinology is a complex condition. And, you know, endocrinologists, at some times, we um, struggle even to explain to another general practitioner what exactly the condition is that I'm trying to talk about. So it's a complex science and um, it's difficult for doctors to understand. It's even more difficult for patients to understand. Um, these are conditions like diabetes, which have a major impact on quality of life and therefore are sensitive. 
Uh, we also deal with a lot of intense personal issues like sexuality, fertility, never being able to have children, uh, body image. And that's why it's even more important how we communicate about these conditions. Um, the other thing is that, and this will, I think, um, you know, uh, most of us will understand that most of the patients with endocrine conditions, including diabetes and thyroid, require lifelong uh, medications. But still, in spite of our best efforts, it seems to be that most patients are going for alternative therapy. Because how we communicate about the medicines we write is a very important part of treatment adherence. And when we don't communicate adequately, when we don't give enough patient education in the right way, then this contributes to treatment non-adherence. So you can write the best prescription in the world, but if you don't communicate it properly, the patient is just not going to take it. And this is a reality. Furthermore, um, endocrinology doesn't have any heroics, right? You can't perform a surgery, you can't deliver a baby, you can't really do much. So it's a cognitive, non-procedural dis discipline. And that is why communication skills and the physician-patient prepo is completely king uh, in endocrinology. So um, now that I've brought to your notice that uh, you know, training programs, clinical and excellence in endocrinology does require good communication skills. Uh, endocrinology is a sensitive, complex subject which requires a lot of communication. But how does it actually impact our practice? And always the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So these are quickly, I'll show you three to four slides which say the patients of physicians who had high scores on the Jefferson scale of empathy. That is, they spoke with empathy and concern. Their patients were more likely to have lower HbA1c and lower LDL cholesterol. And I definitely think that somewhere the empathy translates into treatment adherence and therefore into better results. This is another study which said that when a person goes to meet a doctor and if they feel or they perceive that the physician is inattentive to their problems and there is a lack of engagement with the doctor. You're looking down at the reports, you're looking at the computer, you're in a hurry, you're rushed. Patients of such physicians are more likely to le be less adherent with their insulin regimens and ultimately display higher HbA1c values. Now, why am I saying this? My intention is not to judge doctors or blame doctors or anything like that. What I'm trying to bring to your notice is that whatever medication we write, until we communicate with the patient, engage with them with full attention, even if it's for a couple of minutes, four to five minutes, this directly translates into better results. And that is why you and I became doctors so that we could do good. I found this study very interesting that in patients who received extensive education about the pharmacological treatment of osteoporosis, there was a 92% adherence rate as compared to 80% adherence rate for those people who did not require, uh, um, uh, did not get intensive education. By now, you must have guessed that I read a lot of books. And there's a beautiful um, uh, study shared by Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Blink. And what they did is they um, looked at videotapes of surgeons talking to their patients. And um, uh, they divided them into two groups, so surgeons who had been sued by their patients for medical negligence and surgeons who had not been sued by their patients for medical negligence. And they looked at everything, how the person spoke, how long they spoke, how much detail they went into, did they cover all the pros and cons of the surgery, everything they covered. And the single factor which decided whether or not a patient would sue a doctor is the tone of voice that the doctor used while talking to the patient. So many times in a rush clinic, there are a hundred things going on in your mind and your tone of voice may convey um, your displeasure or inattention or sometimes we talk down to our patients and this can be make or break. So though the, um, uh, you know, suing doctors has not yet become very popular in our country, but it may soon. So uh, Patrick Barry in his book, Author of Good With Words, says, if you're good with words, you can be pretty darn persuasive. And ultimately, that is what you and I want to do. We want to persuade our, doc our patients to take the prescription that we're offering them, because if they do take the prescription, only then are they going to get benefits. They're going to have better health and better quality of life. Now, I'll just... Um, explain this concept called framing, that the words you use and how you communicate to your patients can make all the difference. So for example, if I told you that, you know, you need this surgery, but there's a 10% chance you're going to die. 
chances are you're not going to get the surgery run and uh, done and you're going to run out of my opd screaming and probably just go to the next doctor but if i were to tell you you know what if you get this surgery done there's a 90% chance that the surgery will go perfect there will be no issues whatsoever and you'll be able to go home all right i'm more likely to do the surgery similarly the previous speaker was talking about urinary tract infection so when i tell my patients you know what you may get a urinary tract infection because of this medicine i'm writing you know there's a frown on their face and they're like why is she writing me this medicine at all but the minute i say the next sentence that is if i were to give this medicine to 100 people 98% of them would not have any problems only 2% will have a problem immediately the face clears and say okay doctor i'm okay to try it so just the very fact that if we take a second to think about how we're conveying the information you have the best knowledge in the world but you convey it in a manner which is encouraging then the person is likely to listen to you otherwise they won't we recently wrote this paper which is called as doctor patient communication in people with thyroid conditions and the basic reason we wrote this paper is because to most doctors thyroid is the simplest thing to treat nobody dies in thyroid conditions like what's the big deal and why do patients need so much time with us but there are several things that you need to think about when you're talking about a thyroid condition and i'll just touch two or three now whenever you start and write the first prescription of a thyroid medication for the first time in a person's life it takes you exactly 2 minutes to write that prescription but you're li quite literally writing something which the person will have to take for the rest of their life so imagine if somebody who's 25 and it's quite literally a death sentence and for the next 50 to 55 years of their life they're going to have to take this medication so how you communicate about this need for lifelong medications is very very important and one of the tricks we use is that instead of saying that i'm giving you this medication you say that we're replacing the hormone to support your body so the minute that people think it's a medication and it's for the rest of their life they think my life is over and so many times you'll come across patients who went to some homeopathic doctor ayurvedic doctor stop the medications they're back with a tsh of 500 so taking those extra 3 to 4 minutes when you're initiating a thyroid medication for the first time in somebody's life is very very important also explain to patients the limitations of treatment the hair fall sometimes doesn't go away they don't lose weight the skin doesn't miraculously become like shilpa shetty so there are limitations of treatment we acknowledge that the treatment has its limitations rather than telling them oh you know what it doesn't matter it's all right what's the big deal it doesn't work uh, one of the very important points that i think we never consider i had did not consider up about say until about 6 to 8 months ago is it people who have thyroid eye disease and their proptosis and what is the impact of that on their mental health i will illustrate this by um, you know an example where an ophthalmologist came to me and she had bilateral proptosis and she walks out of the hospital she goes out of the gate of the hospital and there's a chai wala at the corner and the chai wala tells him madam aap to aankh ke doctor ho na aapke aankh ka kuch karte kyun nahi ho so uh, proptosis uh, has huge impact on social interactions on what people speak to them and can have a huge impact on mental health so maybe just a quick question about how are you dealing with the eye disease and do you need any support for that refer to a psychologist if you feel that they need help and one of my patients i just remember till today nalini tendulkar she told me you know what doctor in the beginning it was really tough but now i've kind of explained to myself that it's okay i just have to ignore people um only one example in polycystic ovary syndrome so over the past one month i've had at least three to four girls all of whom have developed eating disorders because from the time they were 13 till date the time that they come to see me all they've been told is you are responsible for your pcos you have a bad lifestyle you are lazy or you're not doing your lifestyle modifications and that's why your pcos is not getting better three of these girls all of them have ended up with either a binge eating disorder um they vomit uh, and one of them has actually got anorexia nervosa because at 13 years of age the doctor told her you know what you have a bad lifestyle she was just 13 and she cried in my clinic when she left So in the last slide what i would like to say is that it's very easy for me to tell you you know what communicate better but if you ask me exactly how to communicate better i think diabetes is the best illustration so instead of telling patients that you know what if your sugars are high you will die early or you will live less or you will die 10 years early you can say that if we manage your sugars well you will live longer please notice my use of the word we and not you because management of diabetes is a partnership between doctor and the patient and we can't put the onus on the patient alone and it's a 
it's a partnership so if we manage your sugar as well you will live longer if we manage sugars consistently well we can avoid the complications of diabetes if you take your medications regularly we can avoid insulin or we can try to avoid insulin um a lot of times um people who are um you know uh, children of people with diabetes they think their life is over when they get diabetes so using this sentence that you know what today we have so many better tests amazing medications for diabetes you are not going to have the same outcome that your parents had and your future is much much brighter so according to me um communication in endocrinology and especially diabetes thyroid pcos is definitely the need of the r and i thank you so much uh, team hormone india to let me speak on this topic thank you so much